This is the Apollo Ghost. It's arguably one of the most hyped electric scooters at the moment, and for good reason. Apollo is once again shaking up the e-scooter market, this time with what on paper looks to be the most affordable high-performance dual motor scooter. But how does it hold up in the real world? Now I've tested the Ghost across more than 130 miles and I've put it through various performance benchmarks to see exactly how good it is. Could this be your next electric scooter? Find out in this hands-on review. Before we get on to the actual performance data and tests, let's establish a quick overview of the Apollo Ghost and what makes it such an interesting scooter. The Apollo Ghost retails at 1499 US dollars. It's powered by two 800 watt hop motors and has a specified top speed of 34 miles per hour. A high voltage 946 watt hours battery yields a described max range of 39 miles per charge. It is fitted with front and rear disc brakes, it has 10 inch pneumatic tires and adjustable dual spring suspension. It has a sizable deck and despite its impressive specs and beefy build, it folds together at the stem and handlebars into a fairly compact size. The whole ordeal weighs 64 pounds. The Ghost is often compared to the highly popular Cabo Mantis 8 Pro and Zero 10X. Throughout our performance tests, we'll be holding the Ghost up against these two models. In short, what makes the Ghost so appealing on paper is its low-priced entry ticket into the world of high-performance dual-motor scooters. We're about to find out if this translates into reality as well. As always, I like to start out with performance numbers. The Apollo Ghost belongs to the dual-motor e-scooter family. They're synonymous with blazing speeds, beefy build quality and thrilling acceleration. The Ghost has two nominal rated 800 watt motors that yield an estimated top speed of 34 miles per hour. Using my pro grade performance logging gear, I went out and tested the top speed at various battery levels. At full charge, I was able to clock a top speed of 36.3 miles per hour on a flat and smooth road, which is even more than Apollo has advertised. With so many brands overinflating their numbers, it's nice to see that the manufacturer specs hold up here. It's got a slight edge over the $400 more expensive Cabo Mantis 8 Pro, which topped out at 34.7 miles per hour, and it is on par with the glorified Zero 10X that peaks at around 36 miles per hour too. In terms of speed, the Ghost brings the most bang for your buck. The top speed holds up nicely with only minor drops until you get to about 20% of battery power, which is quite common to see. While some scooters start to deteriorate in performance already at around 40% battery, the Ghost continues to blaze forward until the tank runs low. Now to a point where the Apollo Ghost completely blew away my expectations. The acceleration. In dual turbo mode, it has an extremely strong torque curve that accelerates it from 0 to 15 miles per hour in just 2.8 seconds and from 0 to 30 miles per hour in 9.2 seconds. It easily beats both the Mantis 8 Pro and Zero 10X with a comfortable margin. It makes sense that it beats the Mantis since it's a lower voltage battery and motor setup but I was surprised to see it beat the 10X, which is powered by two 1000 watt motors. But like I've tested before with the Apollo Lite and Apollo Explorer, their motors seem to be highly efficient at their given wattage. In its price class, the Ghost hangs down offers the best acceleration. Looking at the acceleration data, we can see that the initial pull is incredibly strong, and as it gets to about 20 miles per hour, the curve starts to gradually even out. Above 30 miles per hour, it slowly climbed towards the top speed of 36.3 miles per hour, which took 26.9 seconds to reach. One reason to opt for a dual motor scooter besides the adrenaline rush is if you have a demanding commute. Particularly, I'm thinking of hills. We don't have much terrain variation here in Denmark, but I happen to live in a city with a fair share of steep hills. And I quickly saw that the Ghost conquered the steepest hills I could find with ease, so it's a true mountain climber. 
High voltage dual motor systems can quickly eat their way through a full charge, so a quality battery and a large capacity is really important if you want some serious range to go with your powerful ride. The Apollo Ghost has a 52 volts, 18.2 amp hours battery pack fitted with Dynavolt cells like we see it across the entire Apollo lineup. This translates to an effective battery capacity of 946 watt hours. The entry level 010X version has the exact same battery specs but with generic cells instead. It's actually the exact same battery setup we also see on the $300 cheaper Apollo Explorer, but that scooter doesn't really compare power wise. The Mantis 8 Pro has a 48 volts, 24.5 amp hours battery with LG or Samsung cells, which equals 1176 watt hours which makes it the largest battery of the bunch. In terms of price per watt hour, the Apollo Explorer takes the price by a large margin at just $1.28 per watt hour, with the Ghost coming in second. The Mantis 8 Pro follows and the 10 x actually comes out last at $1.79 per watt hour. More important than anything is how efficient the battery consumption is and what the real world range looks like. I ran the battery drive from full charge three times at various speeds to see exactly what you can expect from the Ghost. In the first test, I rode it aggressively in the highest speed mode. With an average speed of 27.6 miles per hour, I got a range of 20.3 miles. In my opinion, that's a very acceptable result and it closely matches up to what you can expect from the 010X. The Mantis 8 Pro wasn't able to maintain as high a speed as the others, and with a larger capacity, it evidently came out on top. In the second test, I ride like I would normally do if I'm just out cruising. It's less aggressive, but I'm not trying to maximize the range or anything like that either. At an average speed of 21.1 miles per hour, I got a range of 27.3 miles. It's once again very close to the 010X, and they're both catching up slightly to the Mantis now that they're all in the same speed realm. In the last test run, I went conservatively with an average speed of 14.6 miles per hour, trying to maximize the range. And this got me 32.2 miles. Once again, it's very comparable to the results from the 10X but the Mantis maintains its top position in terms of range throughout the speed spectrum due to its larger battery capacity. However, quite interestingly, based on the dollars per real world my range, the Ghost wins, the 10X comes second and the Mantis comes third. Even though the Ghost's main selling point may not be range, it still edges out the closest related competitors. One of the main drawbacks of getting a dual motor scooter is that they often suffer on portability. As with most things, there isn't a one size fits all, every buying decision has its own pros and cons. The Apollo Ghost weighs 64 pounds, so it certainly isn't light, but compared to other dual motor options, it sits nicely at the rather low end of the weight spectrum. There are a handful of lighter options like the Dualtron Raptor 2 and the Mercane MX-60, but most of these scooters come at a much higher price. Most interestingly, it's more than 10 pounds lighter than the 010X. The Apollo Ghost folds nicely at the stem and handlebars, which makes it easy to carry around or fit into a trunk. Now I really like this handlebar design because it doesn't wobble at all, which is something I've seen on other scooters. Because there are so many things fitted onto the handlebar, it can't fold all the way, sadly. Now the stem folding is quite similar to most dual electric scooters. You've got two levers hugging the stem tightly to ensure it stays in place. And the stem can then be folded down and secured to the deck for easy carrying. Now you should probably not buy a dual motor scooter for its portability, but it's nice to see that the Ghost fits into a nice compact space considering the power it's packing. It does have a fairly long wheelbase at 50.5 inches, so that's worth noting if you have a small trunk that you have to fit it into. A fast ride demands proper suspension to aid in shock absorption so you can cruise along smoothly at high speeds. 
Poor road conditions are increasingly pronounced at high speeds, so to alleviate that, it's important that the scooter dampens road vibrations. Like most other dual motor electric scooters, the Apollo Ghost mitigates shocks using both pneumatic tires and springs. The Apollo Ghost has 10 inch air filled tires that greatly improve the ride quality. Now the Mantis 8 Pro only has 8 inch tires, which I think is a bit too small for this kind of speed. To me, 10 inches feels pretty much like the perfect size for this amount of scooter power. The scooter is geared with spring suspension at the front and rear, which further dampens the ride nicely. Out of the box, they were a little too stiff for my liking, but that leads me to another cool point about the Ghost. The springs can easily be adjusted using nothing but an Allen wrench, so you can customize the ride to your weight and liking. This is also possible on the 10X, but not on the more expensive Mantis 8 Pro, though the springs on that scooter felt slightly better out of the box. I've seen others describe the Ghost as flying on a cloud above the ground, and I'll have to agree, it feels incredibly nice even at high speeds. I often found myself bouncing around on the suspension when I was cruising at low speeds, because it was both smooth and fun. The only notable con in terms of ride quality is that the steering has to be worn in. Out of the box, the scooter can have some resistance when turning left and right, which will eventually go away after some riding. The degree of it probably varies from unit to unit, but in my case it was quite pronounced at first, which meant I had to ride it somewhat slowly for a while before I felt comfortable with unleashing the full power. It's not a big issue, but it was a slight bummer that I couldn't go full throttle right out of the box, as I imagine many riders will want to do. In my case, it went away gradually and was completely gone after about 30 miles. Now this isn't a unique thing just to the Ghost, it's a known thing to occur on various brands, including the Zero 10X, and some of the Turbo Wheels, and even the Apollo Pro as well. I would say that the Ghost isn't an off-road scooter per se, but it will do just fine on the occasional trail due to its solid suspension and the sizable wheels. Overall, the Ghost has extremely solid ride quality. It feels like a premium scooter, but it did need to settle in before it was as smooth as my Mantis 10 Pro. With great speed comes a big responsibility. It's no secret that high speeds demand a stronger build quality. More force and strain is applied to the scooter, so it's paramount that the build alleviates that. Across the board, the Ghost does so many things right in terms of build quality and safety. You've got a forged aluminum frame, which is sturdier than the die-cast aluminum you see on many models, and it has a wobble-free stem when tightened properly. The Ghost also poses much-needed upgrades to the fenders. They are a lot thicker and stronger than the ones seen on the previous Apollo models, and they're made from aluminum which gives better durability, and it also eliminates any annoying rattling noises that the plastic ones are notorious for making. I am a little unsure about the positioning of the front mudguard, as it seems dirt and debris can still blow up at the front. I would have preferred it to be angled further back, and by the looks of it, this cannot be adjusted manually either. The Ghost has an extremely nice angled footrest just behind the deck. I found this to be particularly useful when riding fast or braking hard, because it allowed me to shift my body weight more efficiently. This footrest is a definite keeper that other brands should take note of as well. Furthermore, the back footrest also serves to block splashes from the rear wheel as well. In terms of safety, the Ghost has two responsive mechanical disc brakes that are tweaked by default at varying strength. Ideally, you want to have 70% strength at the front and 30% strength at the back, and the Ghost seems to match that nicely. It makes for safer and more efficient braking with less wheel slipping. Mechanical brakes do not feel as smooth as hydraulic ones like we see on the Mantis 8 Pro, but they're also more expensive, so I understand why Apollo went with these. They're still super reliable and they get the job done in a heartbeat. The Ghost meets safety standards with lighting as well. You've got four low-mounted LEDs, two at the front and two at the back. 
Additionally, the Ghost has really beautiful LED strips along each side of the deck that increases visibility from the side and simply just looks great. The headlights could be stronger, but this seems to be the case for practically all electric scooters, apart from maybe the eMove Cruiser or some of the Evolve Tour models. The Ghost has a max low capacity of 300 pounds, which should be sufficient for the majority of e-scooter riders, and I have no doubt the acceleration will still provide a swift ride even at heavy loads. Finally, the Apollo Ghost has an IP54 water resistance rating, which means it has been tested and proved for riding in light rain and on wet surfaces. So many of the dual motor scooters out on the market today do not have an IP rating at all, so it's nice to see Apollo going the extra step to ensure the rides hold up at more demanding weather conditions. Also, the key lock is really nice to have as it allows you to leave the scooter unattended with a little more comfort that nobody will ride away on it. I would still lock it up using a U-lock or something similar which will fit perfectly in the skeleton frame at the front of the scooter. As a whole, the Apollo Ghost is an incredibly good electric scooter. The value is pretty much unmatched in its price class and it even outperforms more pricey options in terms of acceleration and top speed. It's marketed to be the best value dual motor scooter and I think it's fair to say that it actually achieves that. While range isn't its main selling point, it actually held up surprisingly well to the more expensive 10X and the Mantis 8 Pro. It was a little bit annoying that the steering had to be worn in before the ride felt super smooth, but no scooter is perfect, and in this case the pros greatly outweigh the few cons that there may be. You are truly getting a premium ride at an affordable price. The Ghost is for those of you who are looking for a high performance scooter that can ride with the big guys but don't necessarily have $2000 or more to spend on a scooter. It's an extremely exciting introduction to the market, and now it's time for the other brands to step up their game if they want to remain competitive with what the Ghost offers at such a low price. Alright, that marks the end of this review. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. All of these reviews take a lot of effort to produce. If you want to buy the Ghost and if you want to support the channel as well, feel free to use our affiliate link in the description. You'll find a coupon code down there as well for Apollo scooters. Thanks for watching.